Hello everyone! In this video I am going to introduce some tips for writing a literature review. I will focus on the purpose of the literature review, its structure and criticality. In the literature review you are expected to provide an overview of the significant literature published on your topic. Your purpose is to demonstrate that you are familiar with the field to point out the gap and explain why you are going to explore this specific issue. You need to do all this to situate your study. The literature review is usually organized thematically and its structure is similar to an upside-down triangle. You need to start with more general information related to your topic and then narrow down your discussion by considering literature uh, related to your specific uh, research topic or issue. This will lead to the gap you are going to address in your study. This structure helps to keep the literature review relevant and focused. Now let's consider some examples. For example, if you are exploring teacher motivation, more specifically, EFL teachers possible L2 self-development in a Chinese high school. You might start your literature review with a broader topic, for example, definition of motivation and general discussion of teacher motivation. Then you might consider key teacher motivation theories. Finally, you will concentrate on the theory you are going to use in your study, which you need to discuss in detail. In this example, it is L2 Motivational Self System. You will also discuss some relevant studies which adopted this theory. And uh, this will lead to the gap, research gap. Uh, you will, of course, specify what you are going to explore in your study. Now let's have a look at another example. In some studies, you are not using a specific theory but you still need to discuss the relevant literature. This example is such case. Um, okay, let's imagine that the purpose of your study is to examine the impact of incidental vocabulary learning in a Japanese primary school. You will probably start your literature review with a general discussion of L2 vocabulary, which will probably be followed by a discussion of teaching and learning vocabulary or just one of these depending on what the focus of your study is, the specific focus. Then of course you need to uh, concentrate on incidental vocabulary learning which you will discuss in more detail. Again, your discussion will gradually lead to the research gap. You will explain what hasn't been done and what you are going to explore. Please remember that these are just examples, the aim of which is to demonstrate a general structure of the literature review. You might focus on other aspects related to these topics if you are uh, exploring these topics. I'd like to point out that literature review should be up to date. This means that you need to cite recent sources. Of course, depending on your topic, you might need to cite some sources published in the 70s, 80s, 90s, or even earlier. But you need to cite recent sources as well to show that you know what is going on in the field now around your topic. Uh, now I'm going to consider criticality in the literature review. As you know, it is not sufficient to describe what others have said. You need to analyze and evaluate sources and um, to demonstrate your stance, your attitude, and what you think about them. Uh, I will give you a few examples uh, to show how to do this. Let's have a look at example one. Uh, here, the researcher discusses achievement goals theory. Of course, first you need to describe it, and that's what the researcher does here. Then, the researcher evaluates the theory. She discusses uh, 
the contribution of the theory, it's the section in blue, and then the limitations of this theory. Uh, since this is not the theory the researcher used for her study, so she points out the limitations to explain why she didn't adopt this theory. So the sentences in blue and purple here demonstrate what the writer thinks about the theory. Her, um, her attitude towards this theory. Now let's have a look at the second example. After discussing key theories, the researcher evaluates them and emphasizes their limitations. So in this section, she basically talks about the limitations of the theories she has discussed. The aim here is to explain why those theories were not used. And then she mentions that possible self-theory addresses these limitations and offers a more holistic approach. The purpose of this section is to explain why possible self-theory was used as a theoretical framework for her study. Um, Finally, I would like to emphasize that you don't need to say I think or I believe to evaluate the sources or demonstrate your attitude. You have probably noticed that in these two examples, uh, the writer doesn't uh, say I think or I believe. Your choice of words can show your position and your attitude. So I have a few more examples um, to demonstrate this. For example, here we have Brown noted, Lee stated. These are neutral verbs. Probably the writer just describes what Brown and Lee uh, say. Uh, next example, we have Brown argued, Lee contended. The writer here shows a debate going on and probably the writer uh, agrees with Lee's position. Um, then we have Brown claims, so the writer is doubtful, the writer doesn't agree with Brown's position here, but Lee established, so the writer is convinced, the writer agrees with uh, Lee's position. Some more examples. Um, Dalton has been challenged, so uh, again, this shows that the writer doesn't agree with Dalton. Biggs and Smith offer a convincing argument. So the writer here agrees with Biggs and Smith. There seems to be a correlation. So the writer is not sure. That's why he or she uses seems. It was emphasized. Um, the writer here points out that this is important. Uh, detrimental effect. The writer here um, again emphasizes that this has a negative in impact on people's health. So um, by saying detrimental effect, the writer again shows uh, what he or she thinks about it. Um, so, um, to summarize, the literature review should be organized thematically, usually from general to more specific information. It should be relevant and focused. It should be up to date. It should be critical, not descriptive. And uh, usually the research gap arises from the literature review. I hope this will help you to write your literature review and thank you for watching.